Thank you very much to the Istanbul Fellowship for having me. Um, it's an honor to be here in Istanbul. So I, I work at New Directions, and for four years now, I've served on the International Committee of the Brooklyn Book Festival, and we're responsible for inviting foreign authors of adult literature um, to Brooklyn each year. So together, these two roles have allowed me some insight into promoting foreign literature in the US that I hope might be relevant. Um, but first, for those not familiar with New Directions, we were founded by James Lachlan in 1936. He started out publishing great avant-garde writers um, and introduced American readers to Ezra Pound, William Carlos Williams, Tennessee Williams, Dylan Thomas, Wallace Stevens, Denise Levitov and Lawrence Ferlinghetti, to name a few. But um, while that's kind of the history of our backlist, um, the majority of our front list is translated literature. And our most successful recent titles um, have been by uh, foreign authors in recent years, including the Hungarian novelist Laszlo Krasna Horkai, the German novelist Jenny Alpenbeck, Indonesian novelist Eka Kaniyoan, Japanese writer Yoko Tawada, and the deceased Brazilian writer Clarice Lispector. Um, and I just wanted to make a brief note on publication dates. Um, if that's a consideration for some here, we found that uh, we've been lucky uh, placing some of our very big fiction titles in kind of off-peak months. Um, I know the impulse is to put major fiction in the fall, especially in September, but with the example of the complete stories of Clarice Lispector, we published that book in August, which is when everyone's still on vacation. Um, and it was uh, on the cover of the New York Times Book Review. And I don't think that would have been possible if we published that same title only a month later. So each season, shortly after um, announcing our catalog, we'll send around 200 advanced books to leading media and independent bookstores. And we don't send fewer galleys for translated literature. We rely a great deal on advanced review magazines. Um, there are three that are incredibly important uh, to us, Publishers Weekly, Library Journal, and Kirkus. And we find they really set the tone for critical reception. And they also dictate um, how much attention librarians and bookstores pay to a certain title during their buying seasons. And they actually consider um, any books distributed in the US, not just published by US publishers. Um, but they do receive, I'd say, hundreds of galleys a week. Um, so it's best to send uh, books very early and use their in-house tracking system. The next thing I'll do for a translated book is just make sure the translation community is aware that it's coming out. Um, it's really a thriving community in the US, um, especially around awards. But there are two uh, publications that I wanted to mention. World Literature Today, which is based out of the University of Oklahoma, and they're doing fantastic work. They also have a fellowship program uh, where they host foreign authors that have appeared in their pages, and that just ended its, um, in early March, and Jenny Erpenbeck, one of our authors, was featured this year. And the second is a new journal um, out of Colombia called Europe Now. It's online only, and they publish uh, excerpts of fiction and poetry interviews and reviews with a focus on Europe. And uh, they're very, really worth looking into as well. Um, and just one more wonderful institution that I want to mention is the Center for the Art of Translation in San Francisco. Um, they're fantastic readers and incredible supporters of world literature um, through their events program. They spotlight languages like Turkish and also languages that they feel are underrepresented in the US, most recently, Vietnamese and Macedonian. Um, and they partner with the Translation Press Two Lines and together publish an anthology of translated literature each year. And that might be um, the first time uh, uh, an author appears in America is in their anthology. Words Without Borders is another one, and they also try to spotlight um, certain regions per issue. They dedicated an issue to Turkish literature in 2005 and 2008. So after that preliminary work of meeting with reviewers and editors, um, I find it helps a great deal if there's another champion for an author that isn't the book's publicist or editor. And usually for New Directions, that person will be the translator. Um, we have some wonderful translators and they have their own communities 
um, academic communities, a bookstore that they go to locally, and they kind of tap into readerships that we can't reach uh, without them. And if there is no champion for the book, um, I'll try to find one. And that might be a person who uh, expresses admiration in the book early on. Um, again, for Jenny Erpenbeck, that person was James Wood, the New Yorker book critic. And I think he uh, really drove uh, interest in her book early on. But uh, obviously, uh, the, New Yorker time, the New Yorker critic is um, very visible, but I don't think it always has to be such a big name. It could just be one bookseller at a bookstore. Uh, Bookstores in the US, independent bookstores, are really thriving. They're actually outperforming Barnes & Noble and putting some Barnes & Noble locations out of business um, and opening new locations. Each January, uh, there's a, a, a conference put on by the American Booksellers Association called Winner Institute, and thousands of booksellers go to that conference, and I think it's there that they decide which books that they'll give the most attention to for the year. Um, and many booksellers also have their own followings, their reviewers and writers in their own right. If one bookseller uh, gets behind a title, we see sales spike uh, for that book in the store. And now I wanted to mention one of the main limitations on programming that I constantly come up against at New Directions and the Brooklyn Book Festival, and it's the obvious one of funding. Um, Usually my way around that is to try and find a, um, a university appearance that could coincide with an author tour, but that might not be possible for everyone. Uh, but here are the, the main festivals that um, I think are important for international uh, writers in the US. There are Pen World Voices, which is taking place very soon, the New Yorker Festival, New Literature from Europe, Wordstock, the Festival of Portland, and the Brooklyn Book Festival. Um, and just using the example of the Brooklyn Book Festival, we have $2,000 to pay for our entire program. That's every, all of our authors, not each author, um, and some hotel funding. And that's really it. It doesn't go a very long way. Um, so usually our way around that is we invite authors who will already be in New York. And unfortunately, that means that really major publishers kind of win out because they can afford to tour their authors. Um, and if that's not the case, we rely on funding from cultural institutions. Um, we know organizations that represent Norway, Germany, Switzerland, France, Poland, Korea, Japan, and Brazil have travel stipends um, that we can use uh, to bring authors to the festival. And it just makes it so much easier to program them. So if that's all at all possible for authors um, that you're working with, that is a great help. And I should also say that now is the time to write to the Brooklyn Book Festival. Um, if you have an author you think should be considered by the festival, I'd be very happy to talk to you about it afterwards. Um, so I think I'll leave it there. Thank you very much.